Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. We have reached Revelation chapter 10 in our daily devotions. This is the third and final one that I am doing. And uh, again, we have more sort of cataclysmic events. And this is a chapter of many in Revelation that is perhaps difficult at first at least to see an exact uh, connection, perhaps how we might uh, apply this chapter in a devotional way to our lives right now. I mean, we have a huge angelic being, and um, which is clearly representing God and or God's message in in some way. We also have reference to a scroll, and we're left wondering: is this the same scroll that's been uh, referred to before, or is it a new scroll, or is it a different scroll? What are, are we to make of it? And then even amid this, we also have John who's witnessing these things, but then told not to write things down. And again, we're left guessing, okay, so what what has he heard? Why is he not writing it down? And uh, what are we to make uh, of these things? Well, right at the end of chapter 10, we have uh, John is eating the scroll. And it's described as uh, being sweet in his mouth and also bitter to his stomach. We might ask, what are we to make of that? Well, perhaps it's this um, image picture of him eating the scroll, which is not unique to Revelation. We see a similar thing happen uh, in Ezekiel as well. And it's something to do with the message of God being taken on by someone in order to, uh, to give it out to others. And so it's clearly representative of God's word. And perhaps we can take this idea and just draw it out as a more general meaning of revelation and of the Bible. In the sense that God's word comes to all of us with a measure of sweetness and bitterness as well. As you've been reading the New Testament and perhaps the whole Bible this year as we draw to an end to it, you'll know that the Bible speaks to every area and every experience of life, both the sweetness of life and also the bitterness of life. It doesn't shy away from talking about the difficulties in life, this sin and evil and brokenness and suffering and as we see in many cases in Revelation as well, God's judgment and the severity of that. And our experience in terms of reading the Bible, we can feel sometimes the sweetness of God's presence, of God's life and truth and the wonder of his grace and love. But we can also experience something of the bitterness. Often the God's word does remind us of our own brokenness, of our own sinfulness of the difficulties that we might be facing in life and the, the, the challenges before us. Sometimes reading the Bible is, is not that pleasant. Sometimes we're, we encounter even God's good teaching that does trouble us. We find it difficult to trust. We find it difficult to understand. The, the, it raises moral questions in us about what God says and what God does and how God deals with with people. It can be unsettling because our wisdom is not like God's wisdom. Sometimes we even uh, have questions about God and what he is doing. But as challenging as God's word is, it is good. You know, sometimes we read God's word and we find it difficult or we find the bitterness of it and the enemy whispers in our ear that we needn't, bother with it and we should neglect God's word and sidestep this but actually we know God's words are life and the alternative to live according to darkness and according to sin is much more bitter no God reminds us that he disciplines those he he loves and even sometimes when we feel the discipline of God the challenge of God's correction through reading his word we know that is for our good and the momentary bitterness that we can experience be living under God's word is much better than the bitterness of sin. And the good news of the gospel is, of course, that Christ has paid for sin. He drank the cup of bitterness uh, 
the bitterness of sin and suffering on the cross. And that's what the, the Bible teaches us. And because of that, we can taste the sweetness of God's goodness and his presence with us. And so even though Revelation is a difficult book to read at times and constant reminders of God's judgment may unsettle us, well, we are comforted with the truth that Christ has taken the judgment of God that we deserve for our sin upon himself already. And in exchange for that, he offers us the sweet, sweet, eternal grace that comes directly to us. Let's revel in that. We know God's word is a challenge to us and sometimes it might even feel bitter. But we can know the sweet, sweet grace of God eternally for us and with us in Christ. Amen.